Hello my lovelies and welcome to today's video which is my February book haul. So I'm going to get started with the eARCs that I received during February. The first of which is one of two of the Hear Our Voices book tours. So I got approved for The Haunting of Alejandra. So hopefully you can see that. There we go. Um, and this is by V. Castro. So a little bit about this. A woman is haunted by the Mexican folk demon La Llorona in the ravishing and provocative literary horror novel about motherhood, family, legacy and self-discovery. Alejandra no longer knows who she is. To her husband, she is a wife. To her children, a mother. To her own adoptive mother, she is a daughter. But they cannot see who Alejandra has become, a woman struggling with the darkness that threatens to consume her. Nor can they see what Alejandra sees. In times of despair, a ghostly vision appears to her, the apparition of a crime woman in a ragged white gown. When Alejandra visits a therapist, she begins exploring her family's history, starting with the biological mother she never knew. As she goes deeper into the lives of the women in her family, she learns that heartbreak and tragedy are not the only things that she has in common with her ancestors. Because the crime woman was with them too, she is La Llorona, the vengeful murderous mother of Mexican legend, and she will not leave until Alejandra follows her mother, her grandmother, and all the women who came before her into the darkness. Alejandra has inherited more than just pain, She's inherited the strength and the courage of her foremothers and she will have to summon everything they have given her to banish La Lorena forever. Sounds absolutely amazing. This one is for the second of the book tours coming from Henry Roy PR and this is for Mentor by Lee Matthew Goldberg. Here's what the cover of that one looks like. Carl Broder has achieved his lifelong dream and is an editor at a major publishing house. When Carl is contacted by his favourite college professor William Lansing, Carl, didn't, Carl couldn't be happier. Carl has his mentor over for dinner to catch up and introduce him to his girlfriend Jamie and the three have a great time. When William mentions that he's been writing a novel, Carl is overjoyed. He would love to read the opus his mentor has toiled over. Until the novel turns out to be not only horribly written, but the most depraved story Carl has read. After Carl politely rejects the novel, William becomes obsessed, causing trouble between Kyle and Jamie, threatening Carl's career and even his life. As Carl delves into more of the psychopath's work, it begins to resemble a cold case from his college town when a girl went missing. William's work is looking increasingly like a true crime confession. Oh, it's a twisty, nail-biting thriller that explores how the love of words can lead to a deadly obsession with the fate of all those connected and hanging in the balance. And the last one is a e-copy for Frontier by Grace Curtis. This one isn't a part of a book tour, but it is one that I have been very intrigued about. It's a space opera, of which I've not really delved much into that um, sci-fi subgenre before, other than reading like um, Saga, the comic series. But this one is a dazzling debut for fans of Becky Chambers, who I've been wanting to get into, and Mary Robinette Cowell. In the distant future, climate change has reduced Earth to a hard scrabble wasteland. Saints and sinners, lawmakers and sheriffs, gunslingers and horse thieves around. The folk are as diverse and divided as they've ever been, except in their shared suspicions when a stranger comes to town. One night, a ship falls from the sky, being the planet's first visitor in 300 years. She's armed, she's scared, and she's looking for someone. Frontier is heartfelt queer romance in a high noon standoff with Earth's uncertain future full of love, loss, and laser guns. I really hope I enjoy this one. I'm trying to basically, like, low-key try romance in different formats in other genres that I feel like I'd enjoy it paired with. Um, so yeah, that's my next kind of romp and foray into that. So, on to the books that I've purchased. We've got a stack here. Some of them are from HMV, but the majority, I believe, are from Waterstones. So, the first one in here is Medusa by Jessie Burton. And only after I purchased this, literally like yesterday, a couple of weeks after purchasing this, I realised I'd already read this. Um, but I read the graphic novel version that came out as like the predecessor of this one. So, I'm assuming it's just the the written version of it which is interesting that they would come out with um just a regular novel format of it um 
so yeah I'm pretty sure this is literally just the, the writing of it which is interesting um, unless this did come out before the graphic novel but I don't think it did um, so yeah this is Medusa by Jesse Berta exiled to a far flung island after being abused by powerful gods Medusa has little company other than the snakes that adorn her head instead of hair haunted by the memories of a life before everything was stolen from her she has no choice but to make peace with her present Medusa the monster but when the charmed and beautiful Perseus arrives on the island her lonely existence is blown apart unleashed in desire, love and betrayal. Monster, man-hater, murderous. Forget everything you've ever been told about Medusa in a new version of the story that history set in stone long ago. And then the stack from HMV before we swiftly move back on to Waterstones is very um, Stranger Things heavy. So I've got three things from there. The first one is this Stranger Things book, This is Suspicious Minds by Gwenda Bond. Um, I've kind of been interested in trying out the books read, like, written about Stranger Things stories. I was a little bit concerned that I didn't know where they fell in the timeline and if I'd be confused but I thought I'd just take the plunge and give it a go. So this one says, if you think you know the truth about Eleven's mother, prepare to have your mind turned upside down. It's the summer of 1969, the world is changing and Terry Ives isn't content to watch from the sidelines. When word gets around about an important government experiment, she signs in the, as a test subject. But behind the walls of Hawkins National Laboratory and the piercing gaze of its director, Dr. Martin Brenner, lurks a dark conspiracy. To face it, she needs the help of her fellow test subjects, including a mysterious young girl with unexplainable powers. So I'll be intrigued to see more about um Eleven's mum's life beforehand I think we've got like an episode where you go back into her um mind and kind of learn a little bit more but not like a full-on story story if I can remember correctly that I feel like this could explore a little bit more but we shall see I also got Stranger Things, Lucas on the Line. Um, there's three so far in this sort of series. I really do love the covers of them, but this is the one that intrigued me the most. Um, so this is Lucas Sinclair in his own words. Now it's even clearer how different my friends' lives are from mine, how I once would have died to be teased for long curly hair like Dustin's, but can't even if I wanted to. How cool means something different for me than it does for them, whether they're talking nerd cool or popular cool. How no matter where we go or who I am, who I choose to be, I'll always be the black one standing next to them. Lucas Sinclair is tired of feeling like an outsider in his own town. He has no one to lean on for support, with Max still reeling from a trauma and Will and Elle leaving town. And that's before he can begin to make sense of all the years spent fighting monsters, dodging international spies and surviving the tragic events at Starcourt. When the start of high school presents Lucas with options beyond playing D&D and being bullied, he wonders whether he can be more than invisible. If he plays his cards right, maybe Lucas can be cool. After connecting with one of the few other black students at school, an upperclassman in the basketball team, Lucas starts to learn more about himself apart from his friend group. He also begins to understand himself as a black teen in Hawkins, which feels unlike anything in this world or any other he's ever experienced. So it'll be cool to see more about his thought process on why he separated from the main group, um, which I don't think it got a lot of traction in the show. So there's obviously a lot more running deeper in this interpretation um, of the novel. So I'm looking forward to exploring that. And I also finally picked up a copy of a book by an author I am desperate to explore more of and has recently been turned into a TV show on Prime I think and that is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix and I absolutely adore this cover, it's so freaking cool. Um, but this follows high school sophomores Abby and Gretchen who have been best friends since fourth grade. But after an evening of skinny dipping goes disastrously wrong, Gretchen begins to act different. She's moody, she's irritable and bizarre incidents keep happening whenever she's nearby. Abby's investigation leads her to some startling discoveries, and by the time their story reaches a terrifying conclusion, the fate of Abby and Gretchen will be determined by a single question. Is their friendship powerful enough to beat the devil? Like an unholy hybrid of Beaches and The Exorcist, my best friend's exorcism blends teen angst, adolescent drama, unspeakable horrors, and a mix of 80s pop songs into a pulse-pounding supernatural thriller. 
and I love like even the back carries on that kind of video vibe rental kind of thing love it so looking forward to trying that so back to Waterstones I actually went in looking for the sequel to um, a book I just read just recently rated it five stars that was the door of the moon goddess I did a buddy read with um, Deborah from Hills of Books on Instagram and Katie from Katie Ellen's Bookish Adventure on YouTube and Bookstagram. And that is Heart of the Sun Warrior by Sue Lin Tan, which, as I say, is a sequel. It's supposed to be a duology, but now I've seen on like Goodreads that there's an unnamed third. It kind of annoys me when it does that because I, I've got so many trilogies and series that I'm in the middle of or that like, I'm in the middle of or have completed. I kind of just want a little duology to just be done. Um, but I, you know, I probably will appreciate that there's a third book hopefully when I finish this one because as I said I did love the first one and I probably will really enjoy this one too. But the covers on these books are absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. I will have my thoughts about Daughter of the Moon Goddess in February's wrap up. Um, where I give you a little bit of a synopsis and give you some of my thoughts so I won't spoil what the sequel's about but I'm looking forward to getting into this don't know when I'll pick it up though um, but I did really love the other one far more than I was expecting to so it might be sooner rather than later but we shall see, we shall see Whilst I was there, um, the lady that was selling me the book said, oh, if you like Chinese like mythology, folklore, reimaginings, you'll probably like this one. And I think this is the same author. Um, oh, it's another duology. Yay, hopefully it's just a duology this time. Um, I think it's the same author that did the girl that fell beneath the sea, which I've got. And I also think that was fairly new. My um, Daughter of the Moon Goddess was a fairy new edition as well. Um, but this is Song of Silver, Flame Like Night. And it's absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. It's got a little blurb there by Sue Lin Tan as well. Um, but it looks beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, um, beautiful stay, uh, sprayed edges. Bright orange in contrast to the blue. But it matches like, looks like a phoenix. Um, phoenix dragon. On the front cover there. <laughs> So, in a fallen kingdom, one girl carries the key of to discovering the secrets of her nation's past and unleashing the demons that sleep at his heart. Once, Lan had a different name. Now she goes by the one the Elantian colonizers gave her. She spends her days scavenging from remnants of the past for anything that might help her understand the strange mark burnt into her arm by her mother in her last act before she died. No one can see the mysterious mark until the night Zen appears at the tea house and saves her life. Zen is a practitioner, one of the fabled magicians of the last kingdom, whose abilities were rumoured to be drawn from the demons they communed with. Magic believed to be long lost, magic to be hidden at all costs. Both Lan and Zen have secrets buried deep within. Fate has connected them, but their destiny remains unwritten. Both hold the power to liberate their lands and both hold the power to destroy the world. It sounds super epic and just up my street. Oh, how exciting. Love it, love it, love it. Let's see if it has any cool maps. Oh, it's also signed. Oh, stunning. Do you have a map? Yes. Look how gorgeous that map is. It's so busy, there's so much to look at. It just feels so rich and real. Oh, the Last Kingdom. Beautiful. Oh, and you've got the chronology already at the front, like the history, the timeline already. I am in love. I don't think it's got like a character list or anything at the back, but I love it when they've got some information like that that I can flick to. Oh my God, just backhanded the book. <laughs> And then I picked up this one whilst I was lining up in H&V actually. Um, this is A Gift for a Ghost by Borgia Gonzalez. And this is how the front cover looks, absolutely stunning. And then it's mirrored on the back, like so. Um, this is stunning, it's so pretty. And then underneath, this kind of gives me um, Heartstopper vibes. 
It's just like with the colourful leaves there. Um, and I'll read you a little bit about what it's about here. Just give me a second. So, in the original graphic novel by Borgia Gonzalez, two parallel stories reflect and intertwine in the tale of youthful dreams and desires. In 1856, Teresa, a young aristocrat, is more interested in writing avant-garde horror poetry than making a suitable marriage. In 2016, three teenage girls, Gloria, Laura and Christina, want to start a punk band called The Black Holes. They have everything they need, attitude, looks, instinct and an alarming lack of musical talent. They've barely started rehearsing when strange things begin to happen. As the world and Teresa's intersect, they're, haunt they're haunted by the echo of something that happened 160 years ago. Or, oh, I like the idea of things connecting like that. I feel like it could be quite a sad story though. Um, just by the vibe of it, something about it makes me think that it's filled with melancholy um, and sadness. But I do like when timelines kind of merge and clash and, and come back up, like unresolved things come back up. And then lastly, <laughs> this made me think of, a, I don't know if it's the same franchise, it didn't look like it under the author's name, so it made me think of this other, the Unicorn Society is what I was thinking of. Um, but I picked up this, The Secret Unicorn Club, um, by Emma Roberts, Ray Ritchie, and Tamislav Tomek. And this is, um, it's got a secret hidden book within it. I did think it was The Unicorn Society, like a new book from there, but it's not, but I still like unicorns, so I picked it up. Do you believe in unicorns? Would you like to join a secret society of unicorn experts who search for and look after unicorns in the wild? Now is the time to take your place in the secret unicorn club. Earn 10 badges on your journey towards becoming an official secret unicorn club member. Then discover a hidden handbook for only the truest friends of unicorns. Guard the precious knowledge within these pages for the good of all horse kind. How precious is that? Oh. This is so cute. It's like, oh, I love stuff like this, honestly. Just the illustrations are so stunning. They're so beautiful. And then at the back somewhere is the hidden book. Oh. But yes, yes, that is the end of this book haul. Let me know if you picked up any of these books recently. If you think any of those um, deserve to be bumped up on my never-ending TBR, let me know. Um, but for now, I shall catch you in the next one soon. Bye.